Hi everyone, welcome to Medieval Mirage. Let's make our own wax seal stamps, part one. Hey everyone, welcome. It's the 3rd of August 2022 and I'm Jaff of Medieval Mirage. Welcome. It's beautiful to have your company and I'm really grateful for your visit today. I hope you're all doing well. So today's video is about making our own wax seals. Design wax seal stamps and you can make them debossed or you can make them embossed you will see a unique way of making your stamps it is so exciting so a lot of you may have something like this available where you can have your own seal but I'm going to show you the ancient way of how seals were made well long before these were invented but if you're curious, please do watch the rest of this video. It is so worth your while. You will find it fascinating um, to try it out. But yes, so these are the designs. And yeah, yeah, you'll be surprised at how much fun you will have and what you, what you can come up with. Um, yeah, so I just played around with different colors because I thought, yep, yeah, I'm always using red. I love the red because it's just so medieval, um, but I thought why not, um, I'll just put them there because it's for another project, why not change it up a bit. And some of them I've mixed the colours a little bit, so you'll see me making these, but also the wax seal stamps that go with them. I will show you step by step and um, the do's and don'ts and what I discovered really worked the best. To get some really amazing results. We call these wax seals because this is how wax seals were originally made. They were made with clay. So wouldn't it be great to go back to the origins and do that. Now I did these, oh my goodness, a year or two ago. I'll see if I can find that video and I'll insert it here. Hey everyone, welcome. It's July the 5th, 2021. Clay seals were the origins of seals. So in ancient times, clay was used to put a seal in um, and a lot of times the seals were made of clay. So it's really nice to sort of go back in time and use that medium to create something for our modern world. So I'm going to be showing you a tutorial. These are, um, I'll have to get the name of the molds. And this is what I'm using, air drying clay, terracotta one kilo. Um, but excuse my workspace. Uh, the reason why there's a bit of white there, it's just only some cornstarch. It allows for it to be easily retracted. It is worth your while having a brush to brush this on, um, but I'm going to just tip it out now. Um, I'm just not near a brush at the moment and it, everything is kind of all over the place because I've had to reorganize my craft room. So brushes, where are they? That's a good question. Okay, so I've just tipped it out everything out in the bin. Hey everyone, I'm just doing a voiceover because um, this video was <laughs> two and a half hours long, would you believe? And um, I felt that some parts were going to be repetitive anyway. 
but I just wanted to show you the origins of the um, the clay wax seals that I'm going to be sharing with you the tutorial. Um, this is where it all happened for me. I just decided I want some more wax seals and therefore thought well what can I do and I remembered I had these medallion molds uh, by Prima Redesign and don't worry, don't panic. I just thought I'd fast forward this with no voice. I did, I was talking through it, but I just felt it would be better if um, you saw more of an updated version uh, because I kind of improved my technique anyway. So don't panic. This is just giving you a taste of what's coming and um, a much improved tutorial on it. Um, yeah, so this was back in 2021 and um, yeah, and I think it was June, July was it or something like that. I can't even remember, but I'd have to go back on my, uh, my own videos. But um, the one that's coming up, it will have some fast bits so that you're not too uh, bored. Um, but if I feel that there's something necessary to share, I will be saying it to you so don't worry I'll make sure I fill in the gaps for you but it really is a fantastic experience if you're a wax seal fan like me you are in for an abundance of wax seals that you know you won't know what to do with yourself because there's so many to choose from um, so please enjoy this video thank you Hi everyone, welcome. Uh, welcome again to my mess. Now, um, I've been showing you how to wax seals and um, for example, that was just one of those. And but t there's a tutorial for that, I'll make sure it's linked below. But I wanted to show you how I made these clay wax seals. Sorry everyone, wax seal stamps. I used Prima's redesign, um, but you can pick these molds up anywhere from eBay or any cake making place has them. And this is what I did, oh, I just did this one. I decided I love using my button, I haven't got any wine corks, so I thought, okay, let's see if I can see what happens they're very rudimentary looking um, but that was the origin of our wax seals clay pendant cylinders big cylinders rings that were quite rudimentary at the time and then it did advance to signet rings and pendants that you hung around your neck <laughs> until we got to the stamps that we know today. So anyway, um, this is what I was doing. I didn't have my camera on, but it's the 6th of August, 2022. And I wanted to do a few more because I found some more of my um, little molds. So um, this one was this one. And this one was this one. Why not? Why not have a bit of fun? Okay, so all you have to do is grab your uh, air drying clay terracotta it gives it that very kind of authentic feel but you can go for any color it doesn't have to be terracotta so you basically I know it doesn't look very <laughs> very appealing does it but I like to make them look kind of rudimentary kind of gives it that ancient feel so you're kind of creating a peg or a, a, like a cork, wine cork thing. And then you're just going to pick your choice and you're going to center it and then you're just going to press it down. You can see what I'm doing. And basically you're trying to create a stem or handle 
at the same time as pressing it down and there it is now I don't mind the cracked bits but I like that cracked look I think it just gives it something aged and that's only because it's drying out in my hands so I was playing with it so I might do that one again you're just playing with it and make sure you keep your air dry drying thing sealed I should have it in a container but yeah don't have everything at hand all right and you can start forming your your handle and then you're just going to squish it down sometimes I use too much clay um, there we go oh that's so pretty and I just leave the the outside of it but you can just shape it so that it's easy to manage um, and I don't mind the imperfections on it either okay so we've got that one and it's basically a matter of air drying these how long they take it just depends on how thick it is and your climate it's medallions because that's the medallion look you're going for it through for but it doesn't have to be like I've done here it doesn't have to be a circle you can have other shapes as well um, so you just yeah you might want to have gloves because it will stain your hands um, that's if you don't mind getting terracotta hands but you can get white I just like that terracotta look. All right. Super easy, super fun. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, what we're going to do, so I'm gonna try and see if I can get it to fit perfectly by making it less thick. So just massage it in your hands. Just basically going to just push it in to its mold and then you're just going to shape around it just to get that um, separation from handle to the actual medallion um, image and there we go that's much better yeah love that okay what it looks like so there's that one and then I don't know what this will look like let's just give it a little test so you can test them out by just doing that oh that's cool I love that and what's really great you have now got not just a couple of sets you've kind of customized something that to your taste with um, the molds and you can get some really beautiful molds out there okay can you see what I'm doing I'm trying to create sort of a, a shape of a, a round seal can you see what I'm doing I hope you can I'm sorry if my hands are in the way but can you see what I mean sort of like a bit of a witch's hat there and there we go oh that's so nice love it and you don't have to get the entire um, image see how I'm not going for the entire um, piece The more you play with it the more it becomes drier so you want to kind of be as quick as possible and of course I'm doing this extremely rough you might want to really make sure there's not too much cracking going to happen too much cracking going to happen I can't even talk sorry it dries out so fast you might want to put a little bit of oil on your hands if that's happening or a little bit of water um, just to dampen it 
I'm just trying to make this more of a square shape but for some reason my brain isn't letting me okay so see what I mean I'm trying to make it more square Okay, see how I'm doing it like that. That is beautiful. Let's just see what this one looks like. Oh, I love that. And then, I love everything. <laughs> and you can, even with something that's square, you can shape it into something round. Um, if you want to sort of like that but you'll just get that beautiful impression see how that's nice and flat that's what I mean so you want something flat but if it's going to go up like a peak mountain peak it's not going to be effective you're only just going to get the top surface and the rest won't be um, yeah and that's why this mold is too sunken in um, that one there. That's why I decided not to use it. I've got the heater on because it's winter here and it's really drying out everything really quickly. The moisture keeps disappearing. And if you don't like what you're doing, just, you know, remold it and um, use it somewhere else. That's pretty cool actually. Okay. Trying to catch that beautiful, um, what's the word, design. Yeah, that, that's really nice. And again, I don't mind that it's a bit rudimentary. That's what wax seals were like. Um, not necessarily beautifully, perfectly done. It was... Um, more about the signature of the person making sure that letter was absolutely not tampered with um, that was more important and I'll show you what I mean by let's just do this one first can you see how the difference between the two this one is like a bit of a got a peak on it and this one is flat. I'm not sure if you can see those very well. Okay, this one's good, this one isn't because all that's going to happen is unless you have really thick tons of wax, which, you know, you've got to save your pennies as well, you're only just going to get the very top surface. It's not going to. The only other thing you could do is press it down but then you're losing yeah that's right it's it's not workable all right so basically you're just starting off like this making sure the side that you're going to put in is smoothed down as much as possible not too many cracks in it and then you're just going to squish it down turn it into a little bit of a seal get that handle happening so you're going right to the neck you're pinching around that neck area and then here it is all right so that does have a peak but it's not so you're still going to be able to access the the image that's not bad either very medieval but these are how they're looking so you can see how it's drying um, it's not drying evenly, but it is air drying. Um, there's a quite a bit of air and dry air in the air because I've got the heater on being winter over here. But um, they're coming together really well. So last night I made sure that because um, they were still 
maneuverable not by much but I just sort of put things into shape a little bit better um, but they're coming along nicely so I've got them here and I can move them around I can take them outside if it's a sunny day but I wanted to show you um, this layout I've got a big drawer here that I can pull out and uh, basically I can see everything at once if I want to be using this one I can and so forth so they've just been laid out that way because you want it to be practical it's a little bit hard looking at things like this and it can be a bit of a time waster but everything's on display so I got my husband to drill holes for me he's got this fancy because he's a tradie he's got this fancy thing and he was able to use this cardboard it's just cardboard um, from packaging I painted it black so that these could stand out and yeah I'm really happy with that so these will be going in there and the great thing is there's room underneath for me to also add some more if I need to or like I've shown you I could do something similar that could rest on top that I could pick up if I need to um, yeah okay so say for example you've gone ahead and made some of these right and you're going but I want it to be an embossed effect well these now become your plate so to speak your temp plate in other words it's your mold to create with your clay so that this will get pressed into it that will get debossed but when you're doing it with your wax seal it should create that embossed effect so see how this is embossed right and this is debossed but if you want to create a deep a, an embossed wax seal so that it's raised you can use this to create a stamp and that's all I did so these can become the stamps for your wax seals so see this one here see how that's raised I'll just show you from that angle um, whoops see how that's raised and now how that's indented so that's what I mean so that can become the stamp for this and then this is the one you can use for your wax seal to create the embossed look in your wax seal so anyway what we're going to do is we're going to do that now so okay air drying clay I'm using the terracotta and there's not much left so I hope I don't ruin anything <laughs> and you want to keep it really well sealed because it will dry up on you um, even when you're working with it you really want to um, but you might want to wear gloves because it really does stain your fingers otherwise um, and you can make them little small ones they don't have to be massive big ones so you want to kind of match that size so even if it's a little bit smaller than that as long as this part here is a bit of a circle I'll show you what I mean okay right. so this is a little bit bigger than this one there we go that's better I think that's the better impression so what I would recommend is you're going to go smaller um, don't press too hard because you'll lose your beautiful impression but if you go smaller and make sure it looks even on the surface so you want to create it so and just get it into the shape that you want and sometimes having that cone shape before you put the impression in is a good idea so the trick make the clay that you're using to make your mold smaller than this and you shouldn't run into that problem so I'm going to redo this one
I hope everything has made sense. I, I'm sorry if I haven't explained it very well. But if you're using molds, then um, this is going to be the result. But this is only going to create a debossed stamp, a uh, wax seal effect, I should say. But now we can use this to create a debossed wax seal that will make a uh, wax seal stamp that will make our wax seal embossed and raised. All right. So remember, get that stem happening, that handle, and where is it? And you want it to be a little bit smaller than this, remember? Okay, so let's make them kiss. All right, so that's come out really well. It's a very slight impression. Um, I could use more force, I guess, but Not bad. Okay, I don't want to distort it too much, but remember anything raised is going to be the prominent feature. You want to kind of level the, the playing field so everything can get a chance to show itself off of the impression. Okay. So here we go. Oh, that's be oh, this has turned out amazing. Yeah, love it. Yeah, beautiful. So you can see, even though this is a square piece, it's turned round. If you want it to be square, absolutely, that would look cool. Um, but I'm really happy with this so much, and I love that kind of wrinkled crease there. My clay. So we want to get this impression. You know, I could be fussy and get water and everything like that to smooth things out, but honestly, there's no point. <laughs> I love the little cracks in it and everything. Um, so if you were going to be using these like aggressively every day, well then they could die on you, but you know, for the, what, the use that we're making them for. And if you have them nicely um, displayed, um, they should last a distance. If you don't have your own silicon molds there is another way you guys may have something on hand that will surprise you so I'm going to put these out of the way a lot of you have embossing folders maybe well if you do you are again in for a treat so let me just show you now I've got this here this is corn flour you just need a light dusting of it so that it doesn't stick to what you've got here but I've got all my embossing folders or the ones that I can find because everything is everywhere these days with projects here and projects there Here's, here it is this is Sizzix and that's what it looks like so what you really need is something that you can sink your clay into something raised something that will create a debossed effect.
So what's great about embossing folders is that you have the best of both worlds. You'll be able to either create a deboss stamp or an emboss stamp. So depending on how you want your wax seal to look, if you want it to be an emboss wax seal, then you will need to make a stamp um, from an Im on the emboss side of your folder. This will create a stamp that becomes debossed and that debossed wax seal stamp, when you use it with your sealing wax, uh, will create an embossed finish. But for those of you that don't mind both, um, then make both and then you'll get a lot more variety and wonderful um, shapes. Now that is beautiful. I'm going to do that again and try and center it a bit better. I do love that shape. I'm just spritzing it with a bit of water. And it certainly helped it, but you will need gloves <laughs> for sure. Okay, so I'm going to try this one on here. I'm going to really put push in really firmly. Great. Okay, so what I'll try it with a little bit of less over with the actual original source and use the raised part, not the debossed part. Okay. So I've got them resting here and this is what you want to do as they're resting they will because they're still kind of movable so you need to now start looking at them and just tipping them off into the right direction so that there's an even playing field um, because as they start drying, they start shrinking. And that's the other thing you've got to keep an eye on. But you don't have to be standing over it, you know, every five seconds. Just make sure, you know, you're happy with the finish. And it doesn't, the handle doesn't have to be perfect. It's only there to help you uh, utilize this. It's more, you want to make sure this top part is sitting flat, if you know what I mean. The surface is flat. See, now this is no good. Can you see what I mean? Because it's been resting on its side, and this is where it's a good opportunity before it completely dries, it's still malleable, that you keep it under wraps. I'm going to turn it on to the other side. Um, I don't know if you can see what I'm talking about there. Okay. Well, this is already firmed up. It's quite quick, I guess, because it's a lot less clay. Um, but it's fairly, fairly okay. A bit odd looking. Um, and this one's a bit odd too. But let's just 
that just seems to be popping up too much. I'm going to make sure. So flat surface on the top. Don't worry too much about the handle. It's more this and making sure one's not lops turned up and one's down. You want a nice flat look. I don't know if you can tell what I mean. Okay, oops, look what I just did. I crashed into this. But like I said, it's very malleable. You can get it back into shape, no problems. Okay. This handle is pretty pathetic. <laughs> so I've just turned it up a little bit. So I've just got to reshape this without. So very gently reshape things. You won't. Um, if your impression is nice and deep, it shouldn't really affect it much. Um, that's the best way, is turning them upside down so that um, it makes them less warpy. But as soon as they're starting to dry and you can feel them hardening, then I would definitely put them on their sides to dry. So, yeah, this is nice and flat. Just getting to the point of this, of my tutorial on DIY wax seals, as uh, wax seal stamps, I should say. With these stamps, you can, if you're using the molds, just remember with the mold, it is, it has a mixture of debossed and embossed, but generally when it comes out, it's basically embossed. So you can see how that's embossed. Now that's okay if you're using molds because then we can do we can use this to do a debossed effect. Okay, so can you see how the difference? So see how that's embossed up and debossed is down the impression is down the impression is up so when we are going to be using this for our wax seals as a stamp it should raise it maybe not as much as this but it will kind of stand up a little bit so this is a drawer in uh, my cabinets um, and then these are the ones that um, I've just done recently. So that's why they're just separate. But most of them are the debossed when I was doing the debossed tutorial. This can be the first step, making them this way with a mold. And then the second step is getting the debossed impression. Now, what I have to again stress is that when you're drying these, check them over, um, but keep turning them over. And in the first hour or two, just check, because if you're lying them on the side, which I do, sometimes they have a tendency to shrink up a little bit. You can very gently work it so that it smooths out flat. And you want this surface to be nice and flat for it to actually really work properly for you. So it'll, I don't know how long it will take to air dry, it depends on your conditions, whether it's dry in your home, uh, depending on the climate. So it could take a day or two, but you will see the difference because parts of it will dry faster than others. And with the clay, terracotta clay, you know the drier parts to the to the ones that aren't dry because the drier parts become lighter and not that deeper terracotta colour, which is what wet it's more wet or moist still. Now once you've actually made sure they're completely dry, I go over them with a gold enamel spray outside, which you'll see some pictures in a moment. Hi, so right before you, you can see the little table that I've made 
and this is when you've completely dried your wax seal clay stamps. They need to be completely dry. It's a vital part of this process. And once they're completely dry, you're going to decide on what type of color you want to paint it, what kind of paint you're going to use. But for me, I felt that it would be best if I used a metallic type of paint. I use gold, but you can use anything. But I think that spray metallic stuff that you take outside is really worth your while because it adds to that slipperiness that you need so it doesn't stick to the, the heated um, sealing wax. Now um, you'll see the sealer and the um, the metallic spray that I used. Now I would recommend a gloss sealer rather than a matte one. Again it's due to that slipperiness. You want something that's going to glide off rather than stick. And you want to make sure you get good co coverage on top of that circular impression. You want to make sure that's covered well, especially even the sides. So whether you spray it or paint these um, paints on and sealers on, you want to make sure you get into the nooks and crannies and that everything is covered well with that circular um, or square shape at the very, very top. This is really important because it's going to not only protect your stamp, but also um, it won't um, leave any residue like sometimes it's happened with me with a bit of the terracotta. That's only because I never finished it off with a gloss sealer. So when you finally decide on the color you want to paint it, um, then you can decide how many layers of gloss sealer you're going to spray or paint over the top. That needs to be your final layering. And in this way, you're going to not only strengthen your uh, clay because it's porous, so you give it strength. The layering and, of spraying is also important because, again, it's porous. And that's why if you could start off with a really good base foundation paint, like I was using a metallic paint, it just sort of gives it that body and then you can layer and layer and layer on top. I think for me I finished off with four layers of gloss spray and possibly two layers of the um, enamel spray. I took it outside to be safe because I hate the smell of the fumes um, so that's what I did. But I think if you know the origins of wax seals, especially um, back in the medieval times and possibly even up to the 1800s, um, one of the things I used to do, well, a number of things I used to do before they put it into the sealing wax, they actually would either breathe on it or lick it. That's right, the impression they would lick it or they would dab it into some moisture. And I'm gathering they did that to help release the wax sealing, uh, the sealing wax um, once the stamp had gone in and then it could easily be released. So we don't have to do that though. Uh, we're going to put lots of gloss spray on ours, lo uh, gloss sealer I should say. And then um, you're going to make sure that you have some oil nearby as long as when you're going to go and wax um, use your wax seal stamps with your um, melting wax uh, sealing wax please make sure you don't have your oil next to the flame please everybody be safe um, of course this is just done for adults um, this is not for children but even us as adults we can be a bit sort of well I'm a bit mindless sometimes <laughs> I'm just so preoccupied with what I'm doing that I forget my surround so we need to be safe. So make sure your oil is on a separate side of the table and yes just dip your finger into the oil and just spread it around liberally onto that wax seal stamp and do your sealing and you'll find that you won't have any accidents like I did where it peels away the layers. Um, especially if you haven't finished with the, the gloss sealer, which I forgot to do in one instance. So I hope this has been helpful. Please continue watching the rest of this video. Thank you. And I do create, like with a tissue box and other boxes that I've got, 
I, I do create a table for them to sit in. Um, so these are more for display so they can see everything um, on hand. The most important part that you want to actually glaze is the, the surface area of this. Otherwise, what will happen is you will have these issues, which happened to me, unfortunately, because I totally forgot to finish off with a gloss sealer. Yes, I have in, um, sprayed them with the enamel gold paint just to sort of, because, because to, you know, clay is porous. So I've wanted to give it a bit of, I don't know, body. And then I probably did it twice with the, the gloss enamel spray outside um, with the little portable little box table with the holes, you know, pushed in and them sitting on the top sprayed them which you'll see in the pictures um, and then the important thing to remember is once they have dried completely after you know one coat dry it next coat dry it outside fresh air you know protect yourselves because you know you want to look after your health and then you're going to have to decide or judge for yourselves how many coats of gloss sealer you're going to put on the top. So the first one could be a light one, um, let it dry however long it takes dry. I think for me it only took about an hour for it to dry, um, which was great. And then the next layer could be a little bit more heavy handed than the first. And then the third one. Uh, could be a bit more heavy-handed than the next, the, the previous one, but it's totally up to you and the instructions on your gloss. I'm, I'm talking about gloss because I find that something matte might not help um, disentangle this when you're, when you're heating it up from the wax. So we want to be able to... Um, utilize these without leaving behind um, your hard work <laughs> like I did here um, so uh, once you've got to the level of the glaze you'll be able to know when you bring it in to start working with it you'll be able to work out uh, whether it needs more um, gloss sealer on the top now um, in saying that, what I would still recommend, whether you have done tons of layers or the least of layers of a final gloss finish, then what I would recommend is always getting some oil, but making sure the oil is on the other side of your desk from the flame. You don't want the two together because, wow, you are, you know, you're, you're you're flirting with danger there <laughs> so I hope that I, I'm sure that's obvious to everyone and this is not for children this is for adults so you don't want the two next to each other and what you want to do is just dip your finger in and lightly coat it with oil and even if you do it a bit heavy-handed it won't really matter it will just make your wax seal a little bit more glossier well that is going to stop this from happening this chipping away and it being left behind. Now I have run out of the terracotta um, clay so I'm using this is um, lightweight air dry clay I don't remember if it's paper clay or what it is it's a different clay and personally I wouldn't use this for the wax seal stamps no way because it's like a paper clay and what that means is it may kind of melt your wax seal stamp if you make it. So I haven't experimented, I'm just theorizing, uh, but yeah, I wouldn't personally risk it. And that's why I'm sticking with the traditional way of doing wax seal stamps, because that's how they used to do them back in Mesopotamian times, all those thousands of years ago. I do love using my uh, molds and my clays for my mixed media projects. I absolutely love them. They are so cool. 
Now see how this is raised? So that's quite embossed and that's kind of debossed. So when you're using your, um, your embossing folders, you now have a choice. You can go for the debossed look or you can go for the embossed look because that's what they provide. So for example, let me just show you the difference. So this one, I'm going to put this straight in. Okay, there's that. And then this is the embossed impression. Oops. Let's see, can you see the difference? See the difference? So this one here, I use the embossed side of the folder to get a debossed, which means when I do my a wax seal stamp, I will get a wax seal that's embossed. But if I do this one, which does look really pretty, which is the um, debossed, I'm going to get an embossed impression. But when I put it into my uh, wax, I'm going to get a seal that is debossed. So if you like both, go for it. But if you prefer the one or the other, you know what to do. So. I hope that explains things. <laughs> so you can't get away with this with your molds. So you will need to do two steps or two stamps. Um, that's the, the only way that you're going to get around the molds. But not so with your embossing folders because the embossing folders has an emboss side and it has a deboss side. So you can have both stamp um, wax seal stamp styles or just choose the one that suits your taste so i hope that's explained everything um, for you so the other thing is so see with these um, that was made with a mold there it is it's created an, a debossed but when we use it as a wax seal stamp it's going to be an embossed wax seal impression. I hope I've made sense this time around. Um, yeah, so I'm really happy with my collection because I love both, debossed and embossed. So I've got tons of things to play with. They look amazing, as you can see. Um, so these, again, you can pick out the, um, um, the embossed ones but then you can actually see the debossed ones and, and they all work beautifully. We're getting into warmer weather. I'm going to take this out and gloss seal it uh, with a sealer a few times only because I don't mind a little bit sort of uh, being worn away because I love that ancient look of wax seals, you know. So yes, you can make them look all fancy and stuff. But I love that kind of old chipped, um, worn down signet ring or pendant or, you know, seal stamp that's been used and used over time that it's starting to collapse on itself. Love that look. All right, everyone. So let's get back to the rest of the tutorial. So, okay. So with this one, I use this uh, silicone mold. And this is the wax seal. So we'll just go through some of these um, and uh, these two actually there they there yeah so this one uh, this one's embossed this one is debossed but I used this so remember when you're using molds it's a two it's a two-step pro process if you want to have an embossed finished with your wax seals so the first time you make your stamp that's going to be step one and then when that gets all fixed up and dried then you make another one you're going to be using that stamp that you've made the first stamp 
to create the second one which will be then debossed that stamp and then when you use it in your wax seal it will be embossed yes I know it sounds complicated but it's one of those things that you have to um, incorporate for it to work so that one was this one and then I did a few of these ones I obviously must have liked it that one there there's these ones here okay this one was this one I actually love that shape so you don't have to use the entire you can make smaller seals if you don't want them big and therefore it can actually alter the look of um, the piece as well so see this one is big but I just created the circle when I was doing the waxing um, melting the wax I just did a circular pouring and then it created that okay and we've got this one um, so yeah so this one here was this one and that one and then we have this one so see this is the debossed finished and that's the embossed finish so you can see the two differences and I made it with that one there okay so um, those are the looks that you can get but now you know how to go about um, getting those ones okay so this is the embossing folder that I use so it's embossabilities el uh, 006 by spellbinders and you'll be able to see that pretty impression and basically this is what I created with it so you can just see that nice little flower in the center in there well that's what I captured with these seals all right so because uh, so that was this side but on this side I was able to capture this so I went in here so I, I skipped that as my where I got my impression you can almost see it right there and then I went for this one here and that gave me this so this is what I mean so see where it's colored there that's the embossing folder and I got a stamp from that okay so this one is spellbinders this one is E 3D-018 Spellbinders. This is one of my favorites. I think I've shown you this one before. Um, but see that beautiful um, kind of tulipy shape. I don't know what you would call it. I was able to create these with that there. See that one there? That's what I use to create these beautiful wax seals. Okay, so that was these and I made it from this. So you can see I made the stamp using this to create the debossed which created the embossed stamp steel stamp stamp seal uh, seal stamp wax seal stamp so this one see those there that was this okay that one there but I could have the but I, I'm sure I've got the reversed one as well was this one here so that one there Um, so that's Doris here, which had this beautiful flower impression. I don't know if this will pick up at all. Um, but beautiful flower impression. And that was this one here. The one where I almost destroyed it, but it, 
it didn't pull away the important part of the um, impression but I need to make sure I can completely lather it with the oil however I am going to be laying when with the warmer weather coming I'm going to be layering it down with some gloss sealer making sure nothing comes off when I'm using them um, I don't know any more about this I got this ages ago so they're just border Doris does a lot of border um, embossing folders and then there's these guys and I really love these um, they came from here so this one here is Embossabilities EL-032 by Spellbinders. So you might want to write that down. And um, I used these guys. And that one is this one here. So I hope it's um, showing up. I'm sorry if it's not. I'm doing the best that I can. Um, but yeah, that's how I did that one. Let's see, terracotta. <laughs> um, this is E3D-010 Spellbinders again. Love Spellbinders. Yeah, it might be a little bit easier. How's that? And then the last one was by um, Sizzix. This is uh, Tim Holtz Alterations. Um, and that's, I think that's just medallions. And it's not only um, <clears throat> an embossing folder, it's also a die cut at the same time, which is very practical, I think. Um, yeah, that keeps flying away on me. But I got, I got the impression from the smaller one. It's a bit hard to see because these ones were the ones that I kind of decimated. Because the red that you can see, even though it looks good, was what um, was the terracotta that, I mean, the parts of the terracotta peeled away because I forgot to do a proper gloss sealing. I didn't do enough layers and that's why it was stripped away but I think it still left a beautiful look so that's how I got that so I really really hope everyone that this has inspired you to make your own wax seals and then you can use them um, in your uh, crafting and maybe even sending people something in the mail with a wax seal that you have made yourself that would be pretty special so let's um so thank you and please continue watching with the rest of the um tutorial and i hope that's helped you see the incredible results that you can get um and you can make all these beautiful goodies yourselves with just using your embossing folders and away you go okay please continue watching thank you thank you everyone for watching um, I had hoped to attach the rest of this video um, but I realized it would just go over an hour and I didn't want to prolong it so I've made it into a part one and part two that's coming soon is all about how to actually go about using um, the sealing wax how I use it with these stamps and it's really worth watching it if you're new at it but I also show you how I go about adding that little bit of extra special touch and using uh, gold with that dry brushing um, technique but basically it's all about how to um, use the sealing wax and how to use the oil um, and I hope that will be of benefit. 
But thank you everyone for watching um, part one. I hope you're all doing well and thanks for your beautiful support and I'll catch you soon. So please look out for part two which will be coming soon. Bye everyone. Thank you.